Hello and welcome to LearningEngineer.com where we engineer learning for efficiency. My name is Michael Langdon and today what I want to do is kind of, well not kind of show you, but show you a slideshow, a simple slideshow using Easel.js and HTML5. So this is it and as you can see we can go previous, next, next, previous, and back and forth okay so these are these triangles here are programmed drawn along with all of the text at the bottom here and up here at the top I'll refresh this so you can see so this text is programmed in and I'm using special elite which is a Google web font and this is what it does so so that's it and so let's go to the code and I'm using Aptana Studio 3 you can get it for free online and since this is also on the web I should go back here so if you go to learningengineer.com slideshow.html you can see this and the one you can do is if you're using Chrome or, or really any program you can go to the page source and you'll be able to see all the code okay simple enough so let's go back here and I'll explain the code. Now I've, I've marked it up a bit so you should be able to read that. But just from this top, stop, from the top, excuse me, we have doc type, HTML, HTML language, English, header, so here's our header. Title, slideshow, diesel, and then our style types. So my canvas, that's the name, the ID, the border, I have a dotted border, three pixels black, margin zero pixels auto and then I have a divider and so that's the name of the divider and then the width the height and the margin and that ends our style from here we have to go to our script source which for create.js so we can get easel and so on now in this version of this there's no audio with each of the slides and I'm going to be building one that will be able to play audio for each slide I've already got the audio built. I just have to attach it to the slides. The other thing I have down here, which I'll show you, um, which is just underneath the header, or actually within the header, but underneath the script, is this link reference to our special elite fonts. That's that typewriter font that you see here. here and I used it for this as well. So that's a Google font. And that's how we get it in to our web page so that we can use it in our web page. So let's go back up here to the start of the programming. And so we have another script and then I have three variables. I have the stage, the queue, and the slide. And the slide is set to zero and I'll show you what that's going to do later. This is going to actually keep track of our slides. It's kind of like a counter and a slide all at the same time. So then the first thing we have to do is here is we have to create our stage okay this is the name of my canvas and if I scroll down you'll be able to see that so here's my body here's my divider that we talked about that helps lets me center it it's 800 by 600 oh no the canvas divider is right here it has nothing really set and here's the end divider here's the canvas start ID my canvas with height and then the closing tag right here canvas so that's our canvas. And then our body on load is going to run the init function or the initiate function. So let's go back up here. Because that's where we're at right now. The function initiates. So when the, the body of the web page loads or on load, it's going to do this. And so like I said, it's going to create the stage. Here's the name of my canvas that we saw, my canvas. So that has to go there. Then I'm going to create a queue because I want everything to load before the page loads. So this is going to load the queue. The false is important, but to be honest, I'm not sure why. So just put it to false. It's important. And then we have we add an event listener. So queue add event listener when it's complete, then run handle complete. So this will fire when all of our images are done loading into the queue so that when they run they all they don't we don't have to wait for them to load and so this is the queue load manifest and so this is all of the slides or all of the images 
that I'm going to use, and there's nine of them. And you can kind of see the syntax. You start with parentheses, you go to brackets, and then you go to the other bracket right above the, the other bracket. So then there's these brackets here. Curve brackets, I guess you would say. And then I can say I named, I gave each one an ID, and the ID is a number. So ID 1, ID 2, ID 3, ID 4, ID 5, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is all of them. It's basically one line of code. We put enter key, we, we hit enter to line break so it can all fit in here and you can see it. So then once this is done, it's going to fire the handle complete. Okay, so when it's done loading all of these images into our queue, then it's going to run this function here, handle complete event. And so this is where we load all of our our text and so on. So here's my text and bar text intro equals new create js dot text. Then the font, bold 40 pixel special elite. The color is yellow. The text intro text is welcome to the slideshow. So that's where you actually type in your text. Then I wanted to do a shadow. So I did a shadow. But I did more of a glow. But that's how you do a glow. You do a zero zero and then your your uh, range outside that it's going to be glowing basically but of course I use black because my color inside my text is yellow then what I have to do is I have to measure how wide that text is and that's so that I can do the next thing and that is place the X coordinate okay so what this is going to do is going to take half of the canvas which is 800 400 it's going to minus it from whatever the text width is divided by 2 and that's going to center it and then for 280 I just guessed and then you add that to the stage so it's stage dot add child text intro and so this is all of this okay and then we have the previous text which is at the lower right hand corner there we also have the next text which would be right after that and it's pretty much similar to the top one. So once you do one of these, it's pretty easy to just copy and paste and then to make adjustments as needed. And each time you can see we add to the stage. And then the previous shape. So this is a triangle. We're going to create shape. Graphics begin fill. Here's the color, poly star. And then begin stroke. And we do the stroke style. It's the same uh, shape. X and Y, we do a shadow on it, and then we do another add event listener. So when we click on it, it's going to do the previous click function. And then we do the stage add child. We do the same thing with next, but this time it's going to click the next click function. And then we have to do a stage update so that the, every all of this is added to the stage. So then our next function is the next click. So when we click on this, it moves to the next slide and if we click on this it moves back and they're very similar the only difference really is that I, we want them we subtract and one and we add so in this one we have slide and so this is that that variable we added at the beginning uh, which basically turns into a counter so we go slide equals slide plus one because it's initially set to zero so we're going to add one to zero because our first slide is actually one then we have to do a bitmap. This is a variable, new create just JS bitmap. Q, so we want to get the results, and then we want the name of the slide here, which in this case is one. And then but we have to use two string because it's originally a number, remember it's counter. So we have to convert that counter to a string because a string goes here. So you have strings and numbers, strings as like text, numbers are numbers, and you have to either say two string or like two number in order to change them back and forth. So this is just a little trick I learned. Then we have our X, our Y. I have it, the Y at negative 75 because it can kind of go up because of the way I made the slides. And you can make adjustments to that as you need. And then because there's only nine slides, you would change this if you had more slides to whatever number of slides you had. So it says if slide is greater than 9, so if it's 10, then slide is going to go back to 9. And this way, if you keep clicking 
here. See how it stops. Okay. Now if I didn't add that, I'd have to click like five or six times to get it to start to go back because the counter would keep adding up. But now it's going to stop adding at nine. Then we add we add the bitmap stage dot add child bitmap, and then we say stage update. Okay, so we always have to update the stage. You have to remember that if you want to add something to the stage, you have to update it. You have to add it as a child, and then you have to update it. And then we're going to do the same thing with the previous click, except you'll notice here that we go slide equals slide minus one. But then we do basically all the same stuff, except down here when we want it to not be less than one, because that's the name of our first slide. So we want it to stop at our first slide. So this would always be one, so long as you named all your slides one. And then we would add the child, and then we would do the stage update. And that's pretty much it. It's very simple. It's not that hard to figure out. The main things is you have to adjust this, like this source, to whatever, wherever your slide files are. And then you'd have to put them in. Um, the other thing is, you, of course, you can change whatever text you want and however you want, you want it to look. So you could change that. You can change your colors, your shadows. Uh, you can fills, your strokes. Um, so other than that, that looks everything looks normal. Of course, down here, you would change this one to whatever number of slides you had. Okay, so if you had 30 slides, you would change that to 30. And then this would change to 30 as well. Okay, you could change the Y or the X depending upon, and you can do a scale Y and a scale X if you want to. Like if you have a huge picture, you can scale it down. So... That's pretty much it. And the code, like I said, can be found at Learning Engineer um, forward slash slideshow.html. I'm Michael Langdon, and this is learningengineer.com. I hope you learned something about EaselJS or CreateJS and HTML5. If you have any questions, post them on the page. Bye.